So I'm back here with another strategy video. I'm always talking these strategy eBay videos. And today's video, I do want to talk about eBay auctions because I don't hear too many people talk about them or use them. Do you use them? I still use them. And I think there are some real opportunities to make some cash. And in some instances, I actually make more money running an eBay auction than using the buy it now or the best offer function. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. So I want to show you a few examples of when I use eBay auctions and talk about why. Why am I some sort of masochist that wants to lose money? You may be thinking through eBay auctions versus setting a price and just playing the waiting game. So the reasons I would trust or choose to do an eBay auction are very few and far between. Anything that has a very high demand, I would trust doing an eBay auction, especially what I'm going to talk about today, which is collectibles such as Hot Wheels, such as Disney stuff, Micro Machines, G.I. Joes, Yu-Gi-Oh cards and some collector pin, Pokemon collector pins. All of those things have very high demand, a very large customer base. Some collectibles like this one here, this G.I. Joe, which sells regularly for $100, $150, up to $300, depending on the condition. I've had this particular G.I. Joe listed for many months, and it's a vintage. I think it's from 1982. This has G.I. Joe and vintage G.I. Joe has enough of a following that it makes for a good candidate for an eBay auction. I'm going to let the people decide their value. And of course, we're hitting up a thrift store. This store is one of my favorites. It used to be, I should say. It's about 45 minutes away from my house, so I don't make it down to the area much anymore. But this place is huge. That's what she said. A little disappointed when I went inside, found some Christmas stuff. It's not even Halloween yet, so a little disparaging to my soul. But I did find this paper. I used to, to, to ransack thrift stores and buy up all their, their wrapping paper, any kind of paper that I could use for my shipping supplies. So it brings me back. It's a little trip down memory lane. I used to buy those things, 25 cents, 50 cents, and just stock up on, on wrapping paper back in the day. And you can kind of see how vast this place is. I'm headed back to the board games because, you know, that's what we do on this channel is we go back to the board games just because I love selling board games. I make a lot of money on board games. And Gravity Maze. Uh, it doesn't sell for a ton, but I sell a lot of these. But you can see it's only asking three bucks. I would have doubled my money and made six bucks. But you can see the box is really dirty. So I ended up putting that back. Then guest years. I've sold this game plenty of times in the past. But again, same thing. Bad luck just finding a lot of damage on this packaging. And I would have made about 12 to $13 on this. However, it's just beat up too bad. So I'm putting that back on the shelf. Uh, I did find one more rack, Hungry Hairy Hippos. Some of these can go for some, some good money depending on the year. This one's not a ton. I probably could have sold for 15 bucks and made, I don't know, 6 or $7. But again, bad luck. All these boxes. Another reason like I'm going to be running a Yu-Gi-Oh card lot is I know that Yu-Gi-Oh has some value. And I happen to have, I don't know, 100 or so. And yes, I could take the time and look through everything to see if there's any single or individual cards that are worth more than others. But again, because those things are in such high demand, if there happens to be a card that is worth a lot of money, I know because of the popularity of the product that, that bidders will bid it up if they know what I don't about these cards. So I'm not really worried about not getting my money, especially true when I have about a dollar into these cards. Maybe these cards aren't worth very much at all. And in that case, the bidders will determine the value. And if it's only worth five bucks, then I might only get five bucks. And that's perfectly fine with me. So we're trying to look over at the media section, looking for brand new stuff, looking for obscure titles. I did find an obscure title and it happened to also be brand new. These old movies of stars when they were younger seem to do pretty well. Not a huge sale, but I'll end up making five or six bucks from this DVD. It's the only thing I found so far. I did find this VHS, any old horror VHS. This one didn't have much value uh, alone, but I'm going to put this in once I find more horror VHS. I'm going to lot these up and they can do really, really well. So keep an eye out for any old horror VHS and make sure that's a horror and not the other word that sounds like horror. Then I find some vintage books and i found some kurt vonnegut books from the 19 i think it was the 1960s and they had some decent value uh cat's cradle and this other one 
Uh, I think I can get like 25 bucks for these. Cat's Cradle seems to do about 20 bucks on its own. So I think maybe I can squeeze out 25, 30 bucks on these two books. And I think I got them for only $2 a piece. So this was a, a nice little find in the, the vintage book section. And I found this thing. Don't know what it is. It said Mattel 1997. Uh, I did a quick research and found out that I still don't know much about it, but it sells for about 25 to 30 bucks. So I'm picking that up. So let's head back and see why auctions are one of my favorite strategies. So let's be honest, oftentimes I get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff I have and for things that have been sitting around or I just want it out, I will lot up certain items that are similar together and just put it in a lot, auction it off, start it cheap. The thing I always do is jack up the shipping price a little bit. And the reason I do it is just to ensure that I don't lose money on these things. For example, if something might cost $5 to ship out, that's predicated on the buy it now price. So I would jack the price up for shipping up to say seven or eight dollars, something that I know for sure that I'm not gonna lose money uh, shipping if this item were to sell for the bare minimum 99 cent bid or 2.99 bid or, or whatever the price I happen to set it at. If, it's, if it sells for that lowest amount that I put on there, I wanna make sure that at least I'm not gonna get stiff on the shipping. Some of you may have seen that epic four part mini series where i did a road trip to montana all the way back to georgia and i got these in iowa or south dakota and this is half the lot i already auctioned off half of the lot before and again these are from like 1990s these are vintage disney anything disney obviously has an audience and i could these i could go through and sell these all individually that was my original plan some of these go for anywhere like eight to ten to twenty dollars and I could lot all the, or I could sell these individually. However, being that they're not high value and I have very little into them, I think I only paid about a dollar or two each for these. So what I'm going to do, my other lot that I sold ended up selling for around 30 or $35. And these, I'm, uh, there's actually a little bit more in this and Vintage Disney is going to attract buyers. Do I expect to get $100 for this stuff? Absolutely not. But I do think I might end up with that $30 to $50 range. And all this stuff I can get out. You can see these. It's pretty cool. It has these old price tags on it. Um, I'm not sure if it says the year on here. It doesn't. But some of these are from the 90s. I think most of these are from the 90s. So I'm going to lot all of this up. I'm going to start the, the bidding at, say, $4.99. I'm going to put the shipping price at this stuff for I think I think nine ninety nine will cover uh, no matter even if somebody buys this all the way across country. I think nine ninety nine will more than cover me uh, for shipping, so I don't get stiffed on that shipping cost. And same with these. These actually, I gotta throw these. I got these at a community sale back in the spring, and I had these up online. These are old PVC Disney, and I I took I should have taken a few. I had a good a few good offers on these i think i was putting i put them up for about 20 or 25 dollars and i think i got a couple decent offers of like 10 to 13 dollars that i actually countered and they they uh, declined it but now these are going to enter into this auction and then we have hot wheels hot wheels obviously huge demand and again these are something that I'm not worried about losing money because I looked up these individually and saw that they kind of are all over the place and 10, 15, 25, $30 for some of these. And I just know because of the collectors, a collector is going to know the value and they're going to bid appropriately. I'm not worried about not making money on these things. I have, I think I paid $2 for each of these. So I'm going to make money and I'm going to start the auction again at like $4.99. And shipping, I'll probably do something similar, like $8.99 or $9.99 for these. But I do know Hot Wheels, it's just one of those brands where people are going to be looking for this. Same with these micro machines. Now, these have some real value. I couldn't really tell, but some of these seem like they were worth $50 plus individually. These are, you can see the old cool KB Toys sticker. So these are super vintage. The packaging's kind of yellow. Um, I'm not sure if these have a year, but I'm assuming these are from like the 90s, maybe the 80s. This is 1990, 1992. So I thought about doing them individually. However, I'm gonna put them all together in a lot. Again, I'm not losing, I'm not gonna lose money on these. There are collectors out there, they're super popular. And I'll probably put these up starting auction at say $4.99, maybe $9.99. And same thing shipping, I'll probably put like $9.99. These are super light. So it'll cover me no matter where somebody buys this from. I'm not gonna lose money on shipping, but again, 
buyers are going to determine the value on these things better than I ever could. I could put them up, put a high price and just take a best offer. That's certainly a fantastic strategy that has that works for me all the time. However, uh, I do think that these are going to do well at auction. Same with this G.I. Joe. I mentioned this G.I. Joe earlier. This I've had for about six months. I only have a couple bucks into it. The packaging is super beaten up. Uh, she's missing the gun out of the package. Um, so it's not the best packaging. However, even in this condition, it looks to sell for about 125 ish uh, as, as I buy it now. But I'm going to put this up for auction just because I've had it for so long. I'll probably start the auction a little bit high. Maybe I'll put it at like I don't know, 25 bucks, which is, you know, even if it sells for 25, worst case scenario sells for 25 bucks. Again, I have a couple bucks into it, so I'm going to make money no matter what. But I do think G.I. Joe being so popular, especially vintage, people will be out there looking for this. But I think that'll do pretty well on auction. If I can get 100 bucks, I'm going to be ecstatic. Then these are the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's a it's a deck of some sort. Again, I could go through and look for any real winners, but any kind of cards, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, uh, people out there are going to know the value and they're going to bid appropriately. These, these weren't super popular uh, Dodgers pins, but there's, I don't know, 10 or 15 in there. And I see that there is some activity on Dodgers pins on eBay. So I don't want to sell these individually. It seems like they only sell for around five to $10 each. So I'm just lotting all of them up and uh, I don't really care. I'm putting them at 99 cents. And I think I put like six or seven dollars for shipping just to cover my butt and people will determine the value. And I have, I think, a dollar total into those or two dollars. So it doesn't really matter what these sell for. These Pokemon pins, again, I could sell them individually. I don't know all the characters names. Uh, I don't really care about all the characters names because I'm just going to lock them up and take pictures and Pokemon being super popular, people are going to bid appropriately. And I think there's like eight pins or so. And I'm going to start this at like $4.99 It says Pokemon is very popular. One thing that is a little bit different though, are these Hydro Flask. I could certainly sell these and I often do sell these individually. And I get like 15 to $20 a piece depending on, on the model here. However, I keep getting more and more of these and I only have like a dollar or two into them. So I just keep stacking them up. So I'm going to put these four different sizes together here, lot them up. And I think I actually might make more money doing the bidding process than the buy it now because, because each of these costs about six or seven dollars to ship. So after fees and shipping uh, and such, I'm only making like five bucks a piece. However, if I ship all these together, it's significantly cheaper to ship all these together. People are gonna bid these. So on these four, I'm expecting to get $40 plus on these, which is similar to what I might make doing the buy it now option with a, with a best offer option and shipping these individually. So I think I'm gonna do about the same and it's gonna save me a lot of stress and effort because I'm doing one lot, one set of pictures and getting rid of these out of my place forever. I would imagine most people don't typically do auctions on eBay is because we're trying to maximize the amount of money that we get for any particular item. And doing things on auction tends to have a lesser final value, uh, less money in our, in our fancy pockets than a uh, traditional buy it now or perhaps to the best offer feature. You could always start your auctions higher. Like if you minimum you would want for something would be 20 bucks, you could start your auction at 20 bucks. However, when you do that and when you start the auctions higher on eBay, people that uh, attracts, certainly attracts less bidders or less buyers to that particular item. So it's always best to start auctions low. However, the risk in doing so, obviously the trade-off is it may never reach that $20 mark. And I also like to start my auctions on Sundays as I think most people are shopping on weekends, maybe Saturdays on occasion, but I like to do Sunday, uh, have the auctions end in the mid afternoon. So people across the US all have equal opportunity to see the item for a full week. And it's not too early or too late for any particular coast, East Coast or West Coast. And it ends at like, say three or four in the afternoon, East Coast time, as I think everybody's up and at them and using their nimble fingers to bid as high as they possibly can on all of my auction goodies. So to summarize on when to do an auction would be, if you're lonely, if you are a magician, if you're a lonely magician, and if you have 
exhausted the entire library of Netflix's feature films and TV series, then it's time to run an auction.